Well, hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight, we have a show that will be especially painful for me, so I really need your help to go through this. We're going to talk about Meghan Markle and one of the things I despise the most, that is woke nonsense. I know that my channel's focus is mainly for entertainment purposes, so I will make sure to keep the show as entertaining as possible, that's my promise. But it so happens that I stumble upon this article. Meghan Markle is teaming up with Gina Davis to change our perceptions of moms on TV. And at first sight, I said, well, no big deal. What's the worst that can happen? Well, it so happens that there is a lot going on here. So let's take a look, because it's bad. This made me feel physically sick. But first, a quick reminder that I have a satire blog about the Duke and Duchess of Sausages that you can check right in the link of the description of this video. Megan is setting her sights on the next phase of life as it appears on the small screen. The Duchess is teaming up with actor Gina Davis and Moms First, a longtime charity partner of the Archwell Foundation, to raise awareness about the ways television depicts characters who are mothers backed up by data gathered from programming across 2022. Well, considering how much we have seen Megan with the actual mothering and trying to cover her own tracks when she is not doing the mothering, we already know that this is BS, but nothing out of the ordinary, right? Bueno, on Thursday, Moms First and Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media shared the results of a study that shows how those portrayals don't always reflect reality and argues that a change is necessary if we, if we want to shift public attitudes and policy. The study, funded by the Archwell Foundation, found that though TV moms have become slightly more diverse, they are still underrepresented as earners and are still largely young, white, and thin. In 2022, when a couple with kids under 18 had a clear breadwinner, it was male 86.5 of the time. The study found that childcare and the realities of keeping a house running are largely a race. Oh. Well, just to be clear, and at least fair with the wording, it is not saying that moms that are young, white, and thin are a bad thing. It's just that mothers should be more diverse. Diversity in itself is not a problem as long as the story is well-crafted and the characters well-developed, and not using diversity to tick some boxes and call it a day, but my fear is that uh, they are implying the latter. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Davis says she was surprised by how dated the various portrayals of TV moms seemed. The representation of motherhood seemed like such a throwback, she says. It didn't reflect modern reality anywhere near as closely as I had hoped or imagined. Well, we don't know yet what Gina considers a current reality depiction of motherhood, but let's move on. Because this gets worse, by the way. In a statement, Megan explained her reasoning for signing on to the project. My past experience as an actress and now today as a producer and mother have amplified my belief in the critical importance of supporting women and moms both behind the lens and in front of it. She said, This report about the portrayal of mothers in entertainment highlights the gaps we need to fill to achieve true representation in the content we create and consume. And I'm honored to support this work through the Archwell Foundation. Ah. Well, more word salad from the Duchess of Sausages, claiming that there is something wrong with the current depiction of mothers in TV, but not saying what is the ideal either. Uh, Davis has been working on issues of women's representation since she founded the Institute in 2004, based on the idea that presenting producers and film executives with the numbers about gender disparity in media could lead to, lead to tangible change. Images have a profound impact on people's perceptions of themselves and others, 
and therefore the images can be used to create good, she says. I saw that children's movies and TV made specifically for kids seemed to have a huge gender disparity. What if we are training kids from the beginning to have unconscious gender bias by showing boys as more important and taking up more space in the world? Again, at this point, I have to be petty. Gina Davis claims a huge gender disparity on children's movies and TV shows. How much is huge? And how does that disparity translate into unconscious gender bias or boys taking up more space in the world? In the past, the Institute has looked at subjects including diversity in media, gender stereotypes on screen, and the industry's approach to mental health, and its results have had an effect on industry opinions. But for their look into TV motherhood, they team up with Moms First to aim for an even broader impact. When founder and CEO Reshma Sojani founded the charity as the Marshall Plan for Moms in 2021, Arch will sign on as an early donor. Since then, the organization has been lobbying to pass paid leave policies and push for reform to the nation's broken childcare system. Well, that's it. That's uh, what's this all about. You remember that Catherine has been working on the early childhood years for quite some time, and now Megan wants to jump on the broken childcare system bandwagon. That's it. There is not a single original idea on her. But building Moms First came out of the pandemic and really seen millions of women getting pushed out of their workforce because we live in a country that didn't allow mothers to be both mothers and workers. And I have a question. Weren't men also pushed out of the workforce during the pandemic? What was exactly the difference in this case? But... Hands down, this is the worst part. The report notes that only 15% of TV parents are ever shown doing domestic work, like cooking or cleaning. Still, less than 10% of TV parents had a messy house. So Jani says that only seeing images of perfect houses without any of the labor that keeps a home running can help feed feelings of mom guilt and fuel a gender imbalance in housework. Davis adds that these informal taboos can also limit the imaginations of the people who make TV. We're not at all saying, hey, portray mothers better by making them seem even more perfect. What we're saying is that they're living out realities of motherhood, the difficulties and the challenges, she says. I want to say something that could sound a bit outrageous. I don't think people watch TV shows to see other people doing the dishes or doing the laundry or cooking. It's great to flesh out real characters, real people in shows, so... You can identify with them, but that is not the main focus, or at least it it shouldn't be the main focus. We identify with characters because emotions, the struggles they face, how they solve those struggles, not because they are trying to separate the white laundry from the colored laundry and that stuff. That is just nonsense. Nobody cares about that, especially when we watch shows for a word that these people seem to not be aware of, which is escapism. We watch movies and TV shows to escape our reality, even if the TV show that we are watching is rooted on daily life. Even if you are watching Married with Children, you want the show to be entertaining. You want to show us a way to just disconnect yourself from your reality and watch someone else struggle with different challenges than yours. But these people are just missing the point. I don't know how are they claiming that watching a clean apartment will make you feel guilty. I think these people have no idea of actual problems that people are facing. People want to pay their bills. People want to give their children a good life. People watch TV shows to just have a break. But again, my royal rogues, I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. And remember, much love 
and bless.